Okay, so we've seen that oops, metals or atoms of metals have a tendency to form what, what, what charged ions? Positive ions. So metals have a tendency to form cations, and non-metals have a tendency to form negative ions, right? So that means if you somehow you can imagine you're putting metals and non-metals together, okay, the metals can give up their electrons, the non-metals can accept their electrons, and so you can form cations and anions when you have a metal and a non-metal atom together. And then those ions, okay, positive and negative ions, will then attract each other. The oppositely charged ions will attract each other and, you know, get bonded. And so the, the bonding that you get out of a metal and a non-metal atom tends to be ionic. So you have what's called an ionic bond. It's the attraction that holds ions together. Now, among non-metals, if all you have are non-metal atoms or metalloids, okay, then uh, the tendency for those atoms would be just to share electrons with other nonmetal atoms or metalloids. Okay, so when atoms share electrons, then you say they form a covalent bond. That's what's keeping the atoms together in a molecule or a polyatomic ion, a covalent bond, sharing of electrons. Okay, so think of the metals as givers, the nonmetals are acceptors, right? So you have givers and takers together. Then the givers give up their electron, the takers accept the electrons. But if you're just in a room full of just takers, they all want to take, all the all, all non-metals are takers, right? So they're all takers, so as a compromise, you could say that they just end up sharing. And that's where you form covalent bonding.